Model steam engine live steam tests, part 18. This video shows three very different steam tests, all with vertical boilers. The first test destroyed the wooden baseboard, but the others were okay. I get to play with, sorry I'll rephrase that, I get the chance to work on many different types of steam engines, and here are just three of them in steam. This clip shows the V6 boiler just sat on the picnic table, and the fire has now gone out. Well, the fire's gone out in the firebox, but there's still some smoke, and that's because the baseboard is on fire. This boiler's wanting to steam to the end, but I think it's time to undo the union that's holding the pump to the boiler so I can lift the boiler off the ash pan and have a look at the situation. Once I lift the boiler off the ash pan, you can see how deep the fire is. Here's a clip that I don't think I included in the last video. It's called, Oh Dear, My Wooden Baseboard Is On Fire. But luckily, I thought about this because I wasn't sure about this baseboard with a coal-fired boiler, and as you can clearly see, it's well alight. But luckily, just off camera, I have the garden hose pipe. And that should put the fire out before it spreads to the picnic table. Now, with the boiler removed from the ash pan, I can turn the board over and look at the state of it. The board is very hot, very charred, and it's actually still burning. But a good dousing with the hose pipe takes care of that. And even after drenching the board with water, it's still trying to burst into flames. The interesting thing is that this wooden board has not been exposed directly to the heat. It's just the radiated heat from the ash pan, which in turn is fastened to the cast iron ring, which is bolted through the wood using these bolts, or screws, or whatever you want to call them. There seems to be some debate. Welcome to Cremovision. Just look at the state of this, it's almost unbelievable. The V6 boiler's ash pan gets so hot that it can do this to a piece of wood. And now, before the cremation. This beautifully made steam boiler exceeded all my expectations. It makes steam like no other boiler I've ever used. And here it is again, holding 100 pounds per square inch, whilst I'm pumping water into it, and it's running a Stuart Models 5A steam engine. It has everything that I desire from a model steam boiler. It has a superheated output, it also has a wet steam output. The superheated steam output is currently connected to the 5A and it's really going fast. It does like steam at this temperature. But the weir pump that I have, which is made mainly from brass, does not like a high temperature. So I have a wet steam output to feed that, the one by the pressure gauge and the safety valves. If you're looking for a steam engine boiler of good capacity, which is beautifully made and will run equally well on coal or gas, slightly better on coal of course, I highly recommend buying one of these. Now for something completely different. This is a Burnack Vulcan vertical steam engine. I do like this methylated spirit burner. It really does emit quite a lot of heat. It's underneath the boiler. All I have to do now is wait until some steam appears at the safety valve. Because I couldn't see the level in the water gauge, I just kept filling the boiler nearly to the top, like you do. I did leave a bit of a steam space, but not enough. When I lift the safety valve with a pair of pliers, as you can see, there's not much in the way of steam, just a bit of water. Eventually, with the help of the excellent spirit burner, some steam starts to appear around the engine, but it's all in the wrong place. Most of the steam is coming out of the front of the water gauge, which is never a good sign. After much manual rotation of the flywheel, suddenly the engine bursts into life. And in this clip you can see just how much steam is coming out of the front of the water gauge. I'll stop the narration and let you listen to the sound of it. I thought it was a good time to have a look at the state of the fire. And it's good, this burner produces a lot of heat. The only bizarre part of the design is the exhaust. The exhaust comes out of the back of the cylinder block, it hits the boiler, then it runs down, condenses on the base as a pool of water. But it doesn't matter, it's just a nice little steam toy after all. The burner is starting to run out of methylated spirits, so I think it's time to remove the burner and blow out the flame. 
Once the burner was removed, I was surprised how long the engine ran just on the residual heat of this very small boiler. How to rebuild a vintage steam toy. I've replaced the safety valve in the top of the boiler and I've nipped it up very slightly with a spanner. I don't really need to do this because it's got an o-ring underneath it. In this clip I'm lubricating all the moving parts. The piston in the cylinder is a bit of a strange thing. The piston itself seems to be a good fit in the cylinder but the piston rod is definitely a rattle fit in the hull. When I tested the engine on compressed air, I noticed that the cylinder was single acting, so I think the rather large engineering tolerance between the piston rod and the actual hole that the piston rod comes out of is intentional, in order to vent the lower part of the cylinder. But the engine seems to run okay, and it's not really going to be used for running. I would think this is going to be an ornament for the rest of its life, and to be perfectly honest with an engine of this age, I cannot recommend to the owner that he runs it anyway. Mechanically, the design of this engine is not very strong, and if you rotate the flywheel with pressure going to the cylinder, all of the parts bend. Apart from the crankshaft, that's OK. During the last steam test, I noticed that the water gauge was leaking down the left-hand side, so I used some JB Weld to fix this, and now it doesn't appear to be leaking, but it's leaking down the right-hand side. I think it's time for a bit of slow motion. In case you're wondering why the flywheels changed colour, I was asked to do this by the owner because this is how it was painted to start with. As the water level drops in the gauge glass, it stopped leaking water, but you can see the marks where the water's been leaking. Now it's the very important safety valve test. The safety valve has just blown off, so I'm just holding it down, and when I let go, it blows off again, so everything's fine there. I set it on compressed air to £20 per square inch. So here's the finished engine, awaiting the arrival of the owner tomorrow to pick it up, and I hope he likes it. Please feel free to do an A-B comparison with the video of the engine as I received it in part one of this series. Have I enjoyed rebuilding this engine? Well yes, I do like a challenge, and I think the engine's come out quite well in the end. And apart from the safety valve and the new crankshaft and bearings, the rest of the engine is pretty original. As I said earlier, this is a very old engine and I really don't recommend that the owner runs it on steam because a lot of the mechanical parts, being the original parts, are very weak. There's a fine line between doing a sympathetic restoration and making a new engine and really I was very tempted on this one to remake the cylinder but no, that's not what it's all about. It needs to retain its originality. And that's it for this one. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.